Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Uh, today, I'm gonna be doing a video here on my Jeep for the uh, for some work on the carb I'm gonna be doing. Um, while back, long, long while back, a few years ago at least, I replaced um, the two barrel Carter carburetor that came with this Jeep with the Weber 32 slash 36 I think it's the DG EV carb replaced that with it ran pretty well it started to not run well idle issues missing issues things like that you know just flooded all the time uh, so I replaced it with this motorcraft this is uh, I believe the 2100 basically a direct bolt-on uh, you know it runs well it idles great but um, I just there's no power once you hit 3,000 rpms down it goes you just lose all power and you know it, it's just not not working out uh, it, it, it also surges a lot I just it I just I'm not happy with it um, so what I'm gonna do is I know the Weber carb is a good carb um, so I'm hoping that if I rebuild it clean it put it back on retune it uh, it might work out a bit better so cut to uh, the bench um, you know it's already apart as you can see I started taking it apart before I really felt like making a video. I wasn't planning on making a video, then once I had it all apart, I thought, well, maybe we'll make a video on this. So, um, you know, got the parts diagram. Taking it apart actually isn't so bad. Um, and it looks like a lot of pieces, but it really, it, it, I don't think it's too bad. Uh, it doesn't look really all that bad. There's not a lot of carbon. There is some gunk and some some dirt and some old fuel. You know, like you can see on the primary and secondaries. The the, uh, the plates. Uh, there's there's some buildup. It's not that bad, but it, I think it's still. could use some a good cleaning so I'm just going through it all new gaskets you can kind of see I think there was this gasket had failed I think we've got fuel leaking through so uh, that could have been a source of a lot of my vacuum issues and, and uh, idling issues you know the filter does filters don't look so bad it does the jets don't look all that clogged um, and even like the pump and whatnot eh, it's probably all right but could use replacing so I got a kit a rebuild kit it's on its way uh, but I'm just gonna work before that gets here I'm just gonna work on uh, cleaning all this stuff um, going to use uh, this a lot of this uh, for for, for a, not for the the I don't know what this is like a brass plated like these are brass but these are plated and that gunk will um, solvent uh, it will remove that finish so I'm not going to put everything in here but I'm definitely going to put this uh, you know the body the carb, the choke, I'll put that in, and you know, this top part of the carb, I'll put that in, I'll put a lot in, I'll put all the, um, these mounting plates, I'll put that in there, get this um, gasket maker off of it, so yeah, so let's go ahead and do that.
All right, at this point in my filming, uh, I somehow lost audio. I believe my mic just wasn't plugged in. But then, all of the cleaning has been completed. It was a lot of scrubbing. You probably didn't want to see it anyways. It was just, uh, you know, about an hour and a half of scrubbing little parts and dipping them into the, uh, the gunk. But you can see I'm ready to start the assembly which I assure you, uh, I did assemble it. I just, uh, I'm fast forwarding it for you, but there's a lot of little pieces and I'm following the, uh, the guide to my right there. And, uh, just take your time, get all the pieces in and hopefully there's nothing left over. Um, it's been a few days since I bolted the carburetor back on. Uh, but I am ready to uh, tune this a little bit. So I'll give you an idea of what uh, I did to get ready to tune this. Um, one thing I did is I put my fuel pressure regulator back on. It's just a Holly mechanical fuel pressure regulator. And um, I wanted around 3 to 5 um, PSI or yeah, three to five psi of pressure going to the carburetor. Um, I've got the fuel bowl vent plugged off, and I have my uh, PCB valve unhooked, and I have my vacuum gauge hooked up to the, sorry hooked up to uh, manifold vacuum vacuum down here. And this is what I'm going to do to use to uh, set the idle. Um, the uh, idle mixture screw, mixture screw. I've, I've, I've completely seated it. I turned it all the way until it was seated, and I backed it out two full turns. And the the idle screw. I did the same thing. I drove it all the way in and then backed it out two full turns. And as for the choke, um, I have the choke set so that. Uh, there's about an eighth of an inch opening with the, uh, the plates here and I've installed the electric choke so that I've got a little bit of tension uh, on these, not much, just a little bit. And that's about all there is to it so I will use the vacuum gauge to get a reading and try and get the highest vacuum possible before the engine wants to sputter and not run well, you know, basically almost uh, choke out. I'll be adjusting the idle mixture screw until um, until I get the highest reading with the, with the smoothest running engine. And then I'll check the timing. So let's go ahead and start it up with this bass tune and we'll go from there. So we're at about um, 18 or 19, um, and I want to get that up a little higher. So I'll just turn in the screw a little bit. Try to do like a quarter turn at a time. You can see the pressure went up to 20. Do another quarter turn. That's still at about 20. About 21. it out a little bit. You can kind of see it's gotten a little shakier. Mm. 
back up to 21, so I'll adjust it back out a little bit here. Lean it out a bit. Still at 21, I'm gonna lean it out a little more. Keep going until I see a change. A little more. So that's what all, about all there is to it for that. Uh, one thing I want to do real quick is check the timing. Now that I have that set. This on the number one lug. Now every vehicle is going to be different. Um, you know, I like to get around. I start at like 22, 26, and I see how it runs, and I adjust it from there. It's every engine is going to run a little different as far as uh, optimal timing. Um, you know, it, best performance is it's it's really you're gonna have to test it out, set the timing, drive, let it warm up, see how the power is at high RPM, things like that. So I usually like starting at like 22 ish uh, and test it and see how it runs from there. So we'll go ahead and try that. Now I believe it's a half inch, half inch bolt to loosen the distributor. Yep, half inch. So I'm just gonna loosen it a bit. Just to get it so I can turn the distributor by hand. And counterclockwise retards it. And clockwise advances it I believe with this particular timing light you set it to the degree that you want it to be set at and when you shine it on the, uh, the crank you want to get the mark at zero and when the marks at zero that's when you know you've uh, reached the setting that you put on your light if you set this to zero and then check your timing, you're going to have to read your your timing marks on your crank, which if your truck is anything like mine or your Jeep's anything like mine. It's a complete rust, rust, rusty mess down there, and you can't make out anything other than zero. I uh, I took a paint pen and marked zero on mine, so I j at least know where zero is. And then this is handy. You just set this to whatever you want your timing to be, and make sure you mark goes to zero on the crank and you're good. Let's do, test this out. Don't make this mistake. When you take your vacuum gauge off, make sure you make sure you plug up the hole, either with your PVC, PCV valve or with a cap. Otherwise, it's going to throw everything off. In this case, I'm just going to hook this back up. That way, we don't lose all our manifold vacuum. If I move my gun down to 22, you can see the timing mark on the crank is all the way up. So I'm going 
24. about 25. 24, 25. Set. And yeah, counterclockwise or clockwise will retard it. So now that it's set, you just cinch down this bolt on the distributor so it can't move. That's it. So that's basically it. Um, not much to it. Um, now that I've got everything tuned, for the most part, how I like it, I'll, you know, the only thing to do is to take a couple test drives, see if anything changes, if you need to adjust the timing or the choke anymore. Um, but at this point, we'll button everything back up and put the air cleaner on, hook the PCV valve up, and take it for a ride. change a thing. Listen to this one. Plenty of power. Let's check out the RPMs. I mean, come on, steady. Steady. What other CJ do you see with that kind of steady RPM gauge, huh? See you all next time.